How you doing, Mr. Brown? Good, how are you? I'm happy to be in the midst of everybody that's here, specifically for those that live in the Fifth Ward, because we have a concern that is really, really bothering us on a consistent basis. My name is Mr. Juan Twiz Davis. I spoke at the Flint Public Library. And uh, my concern and my compassion is about crime in our community. We have a crime rate now that is so unprecedented that it feels like it has made us feel debilitated to the degree that we don't really know what much to do. But I do know this, that if we can come up with a program that is viable and has substance in it, especially for those with felons, they need employment. We have a lot of private sectors and we have a lot of owners, entrepreneurs that have these jobs that are reluctant to hire these guys. But these guys are skillful trade workers who can work in these facilities and can do a great job if they was only given a second chance. As I spoke at the Flint Public Library, and you mentioned about the general fund, the general fund is spending almost, if not a third, in the Michigan Department of Corrections. Probably 1.9, probably 2 billion. Last I knew it was 2.2. I'm not good in that math and dealing with that, but we know that they spend a lot of money in dealing with that. They send these guys home to try to prevent them from cutting from health care and cutting from medical. But when they send them home, as I spoke before, they send them home with no basis to have a good life. These guys have kids. These women have kids. But we don't have no employment for them. They said we have a medical health issue in our community. But what we fail to realize is mentally we have an issue. That's a medical issue. Because these guys can't think right. They can't guide right. They can't do anything that's right because there is no proper moral system in line to bring them a point or bring them abreast on what's actually going on in our society. But I tell you this, if you can put five to six hundred dollars into their pockets, well, if you can put five three, four, five, six hundred dollars in their pocket a week. They will actually work. And put them on third shift. Put them in factories. Put them on third shift. Put them somewhere where they can work at the time when crime is going on. Had we came up with an institution that could do this for these guys? You know, I, I think we do have to have a plan for unemployment in this community. Uh, what I can say is we'll work with you uh, and just uh, stay in touch with us. We'll find a way to keep why? Because you said that you're going to contact me and we'll be able to talk about this because the person that you really need to talk about is the person that's living right in the midst of the violence, who can actually come up with a good resolution that can actually change the constitution of their thinking. Because first, in order for the young generation to actually want to change their mind, they have to first respect you. And in order for them to respect you, they have to know who you are. And they will not respect nobody who they don't know. You can come up with a mandated law, you can come up with all the rules and try to institute it into their minds, but if they don't respect you, they don't care what you do. Okay, I'm going to ask you to close. I am, I'm going to close, but this is a great concern in the Fifth Ward. So this is something that I need to speak to you about, and maybe we can come together, because I live in the midst of it, and we can come together and see if we can institute something with somebody who they actually respect. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> I apologize again, and um, we don't want to cut anyone off, but we're going to add to you, if possible, please try to limit your comments or your questions to two minutes so that everybody can get theirs in and so that there's time for those questions and comments to be addressed. Thanks. Good evening, Mr. Brown. How are you doing? Uh, I passed through a church in centralized, basically, in the center of Councilman Law, this past, these past two years, I guess, have been working on revitalizing the area and where the church is, which is between Hamilton and, and Welch, basically. Uh, there's been some houses torn down, and we want to know if, well, I want to know if the commitment that he and I made to revitalize our area, we are, we are, we are, we're partnering with
different businesses around the area. We're doing, I guess you would say, the right thing. Will we have the commitment of tearing down the houses and diminishing the houses, the blight and the nuisance uh, that we see around our area that our children are, are playing around? Uh, do we still have that commitment? Can I look for that commitment from my, my councilman and from, from my mayor and, and, and from you? Do we still have that commitment? Well, you know, what I would say is that uh, that was really largely federal money that uh, paid for the demolishing of many of those homes. And so we're going to aggressively pursue grants to do that. Uh, but I can tell you that we have no resources within the city coffers right now. But we will work with you, we'll work with the neighborhood groups uh, and pursue those federal dollars or state dollars if they come through the state, you know, the NSP dollars that have come through the state. Uh, but we'll, I'll pledge to continue to work with you. What I can't pledge is dollars that we don't have. Though. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'll try to deal with those on the 
tell you is we have a multi-million dollar deficit. We have to cut costs not only there, but in a lot of other places. That was the beginning. There, there are no